Ron.
house and the proposed building. As you can see, the existing house doesn't meet our current setback. As with many lots in the Twin Lakes area, um, these lots were developed prior to the adoption of the zoning ordinance um, and are considered grandfathered in or considered being non-conforming uses. Well, in this case, the applicant would like to demolish the existing house and reconstruct it almost in the same layout, but he will be further encroaching on some of the setbacks, um, particularly the setback on George Merritt Circle. As you can see, it doesn't meet our current setbacks, um, and the building they're proposing will further encroach into the, the setback line. Um, as with the side yard setback, which is located on the north, north block line. The R10 standards require you to be at least 10 feet from the side property line. Applicant is proposing to go with a five foot setback um, along the George Merritt Circle, which is the west block line. The required setback is 30 and a half feet from the property line, and they are proposing to be 10 and a half feet from the property line. And along the Oscar Drive, the required setback is 40 feet from the property line. And they're proposing to be 22 feet from the property line. So the building that's being proposed will encroach upon the setbacks um, as well. Staff looked at this, and um, we debated quite a bit on this case. Um, and it was a choice of just having what you have, just leaving it there, or do we want to see an improvement, something that's going to add to the tax base, something that's going to improve the area, and we opted to go with the proposed site plan. So with that, staff is recommending approval um, of the variances on three sides, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Oh, I would like to note that the current owner, they are selling this property and the proposed buyer owns a piece of property across the Yasta Drive. Um, you went out there, you would notice a really nice stone brick uh, house, and they're proposing to, to build on this property. They didn't give us any details of what the architectural is going to be like, but the applicant is here, and he can answer some questions. Okay, and just so we've all got it clear in our minds, the setback that they are requesting on the south side is five feet no no you told me on the north i call it the north lot line if you're looking at it i looked at the right picture again yeah. okay the north lot line i got it okay got it. and you know whenever you get you know five feet or less from a property line, the fire department and building inspection, they would be concerned. But in this case, um, with the five foot setback, they didn't, you know, call out any concerns they had with, with that being that close to the property line. Any questions, any discussions from the board, ladies and gentlemen? Now, the proposal is for a new single-family home and an outbuilding, storage building. All will be contained in one building. Okay. And do we have a square footage on the new building? Roughly 2,000 square feet. Um, when you look at that site plan, they, they depicted a 50 by 40, so roughly 2,000. I don't know whether it's going to be exact square or whether there's going to be angles and a portion of it, but, you know, the outcome should be answered. Other questions, discussions? Thank you, Carmelo. Is there anyone here in support or is there <coughs> anyone here who would like to give us any additional information? I'm here. I can answer if you go any additional information. Can I get your name and address for the record? Yep, yeah, this is uh, Jeff Moore. Okay. My address is 5831 Diosta, directly across the street from this location. Okay. Is there anything that you would like to add? To what she has presented? Um, it'll be the exact same as my house across the street. Um, we're going to just put uh, a small dwelling um, for overflow. People come to our house now. I've got a family in Atlanta that comes down quite a bit. And, uh, I use a little bit of privacy, so uh, parking them over there. 
so you're, this is for, this is not going to be a rental. This is not going to be a rental. Nor is my house now. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question. So, one of my questions was, is it going to be owner-occupied sort of? It will be owner-occupied, yeah. um, But not day-to-day, -day. it's a guest house. Yeah, day-to-day. -day. Because, I mean, if you, if you look at my house now, if I open a window in my house, I can stick my arm out and touch the fence of the, the people next door. So, literally, I have nowhere to put stuff other than my garage now. So, when you live on the lake and you have stuff that you use on the lake, there's nowhere really to put it because you have this you have this, this area between your house and your fence that's like just big enough for you to walk down. Well, that, that, that leads me to my question. Yeah. On the five foot setback, yeah. um, I also am a little nervous about having it that close sure. because the lots down there are small. Um, and so a 50 by 40 house is a, a 2,000 square feet. If you were to not have the, if you were to meet the setback at 10, it would just push the, the building over. Well, no, you could make it skinnier. You'd be 1750. I mean, is that a deal breaker to make the house a little smaller? It, it, it is from the standpoint of what I want to be able to put in the garages, from the standpoint of, of the boat going in the garage. Um, and with the person that's next door, where their house is positioned on their lot, it's not close to the, their house. Their house is on the opposite side of the lot next door. So if you if on the north side, what Carmel was calling the north side, if it was the house that was that close, I wouldn't want to do it either. Um, but since the house is on the opposite side of the lot, it didn't, it didn't bother me. Okay. So you're going to park your boat over there? My boat and other vehicle as well. And, and, and your family who comes to visit? Exactly. <laughs> Nancy? How much of the 2,000 square feet is house and how um, much is storage? I'm not positive exactly how much was going to be. Um, it was enough to get a bathroom, a bed, I mean the whole, like a, like a whole. Like a one bedroom? Yeah, exactly. It would almost be like a loft. It would almost be like a, I lived in a loft downtown for a little while. And I envisioned doing like very similar to that from the standpoint of having almost like a sink, a sink cabinet area where there's a sink cabinet area and, and then a, a bed and just kind of all in one big open room. So it won't be like a two bedroom it will or not, a bath. No. It'll be. Yeah. Is, is this going to be a pre engineered structure? Yes, sir. Skinned on the outside with, uh, with cypress. Okay, so the exterior will still match your exactly. Exterior. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. It'll, it'll be board and bath cypress okay. with, uh, with green can, just like my house. Any other questions? Um, did you happen to speak to the neighbor? I did, yeah. Actually, when I was out there, several neighbors came to me. Um, and that's honestly what made me you know, feel even a, a, a little bit more inclined than that. Uh, you know, what's over there now is pretty rough. And, uh, and nobody really likes looking at that. And, um, you know, it, it, it's one of those things that when the lady from across the street I parked my boat over there before to have a service, and she came over and uh, she um, she asked me, said, will you please buy this and, uh, and and do something with it? And I didn't even know who owned it, honestly. And um, and I started trying to find who owned it, and uh, and ended up getting in touch with Jeff, and and uh, he told me, said, listen, I'll I'll help you out to to do what what's right here. So. But as far as the neighbor, neighbor right behind you on this five foot setback, that's they're, her. They're, they're okay. Yeah, the, the, and they're my neighbors right across the street now. Okay. Um, so literally, the neighbor directly across the street from me, and the neighbor on the on the total opposite side of, of George Merrick Circle, they both almost were pleasant. Yeah. Any other questions? Any other comments? Okay. Thank you. Anyone here in opposition to this request? Or anyone have questions about what is being requested? And there was basically no contact to your office or it was just general questions? It's a general question, but no answer in opposition. They just want to know what's going on. Any other discussions from the board? Can I entertain a motion on this?
for this request. I make a motion we approve the setbacks uh, as uh, presented, citing criteria D. Uh, motion from Mr. McCall to grant the request as presented, citing criteria D. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from this hobby. All in favor, please raise a hand. You're now in good luck with you. Thank you very much. Get the family out from under your elbow. Yeah. Don't tell them I said Yeah. Okay, the next case we'll call is the City of Mount Oscar case, application 2016 dash 08. Jesse M. Garnto, 203 Simpson Street, Mount Oscar. Miss Tracy, it is your show. This is a request from Ms. Jessie Garnto for a PILOT, previously existing land use certificate, say that 10 times fast, yeah. um, to reestablish a number one manufactured home in our 10 zone district. You can see the rectangular property, zone R10, at the end of Simpson Street, the elbow with flame. It was, was, a manufactured home, double wide, that was annexed into the city during the 2005-2006 annexation cases. Annexed in as is, zone R10. Single family, single family residential, which allows site built homes, state built homes, and modulars. Unfortunately, under today's standards, does not permit double wide manufactured homes. She had a technical glitch when her knee came through and the tree landed smack in the local roof, um, damaging the home to where insurance needed a double loss. The applicant would like to replace it and enhance to replace it with the model manufacturing home that I laid on your at your stations. Um, so what did she replace her? That's what she intends to replace the damaged home with. Um, like I said, it's on R10, does not allow manufactured homes. Um, so she is here following that PLUC to be able to replace the damaged manufactured home with a new manufactured home. Staff reviewed it. There are a blend of stock built homes and manufactured homes in the area. We felt very comfortable recommending for approval. Recommend for approval. Any questions? Any questions at this time? Thank you, Tracy. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on behalf of the applicant, or is the applicant here would like to give us any additional information? Well, that would be my key. My name is Robin Hancock. I'm um, Jesse Garnett's old story. This is my mom. Uh, mom had lived there. I grew up there 44 years. I ain't telling how old I was. But anyway, <laughs> um, basically, Mama um, was made a widow two years ago, and she got down she lived in a hotel. So hopefully, you know, we're replacing it. We're not asking for anything else except to replace what Mama has lost. Um, at this point, we have, um, like Tracy said, um, we've got one uh, in front of you. Um, that's the smallest that we could get um, to replace what Mom has. We tried to get smaller, but we tried to get bigger. But Mama's just Mom. She just needs somewhere to put grandchildren, great grandchildren. So, but I'll be glad to answer any questions that, that you have. Anybody have any questions for the applicant? The information that Tracy presented is accurate as far as you know. What, yes. What's your purpose? Yes. Okay. Is there anyone here in opposition to this request? Anyone have any questions about what is being requested? Is there any contact with your office? Tracy? Any other discussion, ladies and gentlemen? Um, um, I, I did. Uh, I visited the site here, and uh, I met Mr. Sidney Bland. He said. You know, just make sure to let everybody know that he had the same similar situation that his is doing just fine. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Can I entertain a motion on this request? I make a motion to approve the 
make a motion to approve because it satisfies all the city's criteria. I have a motion. And I have a I have a second. Uh, all in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Good luck with it. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Board. You're welcome. Get it in there so she can get out of the hotel. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Okay, we have approval of the minutes. I read them and didn't see anything. Did anybody see anything that I missed? And I get a motion to accept the minutes as requested. As presented. I'm sorry, as presented. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as presented. I have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? I have a second on the floor. All in favor, raise a hand. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, now we get down to serious business. Nomination chairman and vice chair for the coming year. We normally open nominations in November. We vote in December and at the January meeting, the new chairman and the new vice chairman will take office. The floor is open for nomination. I would like to nominate Mac McCall to be the vice chairman for the following reason. Um, chairman Strickland and I both have our reappointments next year, and should both of us not be reappointed, then we would have to do something different. So I would like Mr. Mac McCall to be the vice chairman since his appointment isn't up for a while and we could get some experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have one nomination for vice chair. Along those same lines, if you have a problem potentially with me being not reappointed, then it's not going to hurt my feelings if y'all want to nominate somebody else. I nominate you too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have a nomination on the floor for. Mr. Strickland to be chair and for Mr. McCall to be vice chair for the calendar 2017 year. Are there any further nominations? I need a motion to close nominations. I have a motion from Nancy to close nominations. Second? I second. I have a second. All in favor, raise a hand. Unanimous. All right, that is your slate for vote next month in December. We have <coughs> adoption of the 2017 meeting calendar. Does anybody have a problem with January 3rd? Anybody going to be traveling from New Year's weekend on the 3rd? The only deviations I made were similar to past years. Fourth of July falls on the first Tuesday in 2017, so I bumped it to the 11th. Um, so Labor Day, the first Tuesday falls the day after Labor Day. Um, if you'd like to have it that Tuesday, let me know. Otherwise, I bumped it to the 12th, the second Tuesday. Anybody got any questions, any discussions on either of those dates? I don't have a problem having the day after Labor Day. It doesn't matter to me either. In years past, we have, and that's the only reason. If you'd like to bump it back. At this point, does anybody, well, if it's a year out, I mean, and we could adjust it later, right. one way or the other. Right. Uh, maybe we put a tickler in and we talk about that either in June or July. <coughs> And we can make that call along those same lines. If we move it, does that create a problem in either or both county or city offices? No, we're used to it. We, we'd just like to know a couple of months before to get the advertisement dates correct and to be able to reserve the number of that's Well, do we need to talk about 
September Labor Day weekend in May or June instead of June or July. Put a tickler out there. We can we can touch base with it, you know, a couple of months if we have to. Just don't let us do, get too close and then have a problem. Uh, discussion item: holiday gathering. Can we can we officially adopt the calendar? Can I get a motion to adopt the calendar. Do, we, do, I, review. do we need to move that September twelfth a week prior to the? What's your plan? You want to leave it like it is and then adjust it later if we need to? Well, if we leave it like this, there won't be any adjusting necessary. This is not the voice of that option. Okay. To have it the day after Labor Day, in which case there might be adjusting necessary. If somebody's traveling. It's not the way it is. Okay. Can I get a motion to adopt the schedule as presented? I have a motion, Mr. McCall, to accept and adopt the schedule as presented. Second? I second that motion. I have a second. All in favor, raise a hand. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for straightening me out. <laughs> All right. Discussion item. Holiday gathering. In the past, we have, and in the past, we have not. In the past, we have been joint with other similar boards and whatnot. And in the past, we have had individual, or I'm not even with individual, just, just us. Does anybody have any feeling, any suggestions? I've spoken to James Fulton, who's the HPC administrator. They have not scheduled anything for the holidays. GLPC has? They are discussing it. Okay. There's some dates for them. Okay. Does anybody have any suggestions, any preference? I going to Nancy's house. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we have done it at Nancy's house a couple of times. Once or twice. We have done it jointly a couple of times. We did it here once or twice after our meeting with just our group. So it's wide open. Did y'all want to think about it? We try to nail something down. Next month? No, we can't. We gotta do something now. Uh, pretty much everything. Well, what what does planning commission think of doing? That they it would December twelfth was floating around. And I think Matt Matt told me this morning they were meeting at Austin. Okay, six o'clock. I don't remember what time, but I just remember dinner at Austin. But we can just keep in just keep in touch with you guys if you want. Um, it's a couple of weeks ahead in advance, and we can do an RSVP. Right. Well, the, the 12th is the second Monday in December. Does anybody have a problem with the 12th if it were to be a joint? I have no problem with Austin's at all. <laughs> <laughs> What do y'all normally do? Just have a dinner? Just go to dinner? Yeah, yep. that's it. Sometimes we, in the past we have had a sit down buffet kind of dinner. <coughs> in the past we just had a mix and mingle with uh, hors d'oeuvres kind of thing. I mean, it's, it's wide open. We've got a little bit of all of it. Can we do something with just our group and the staff? Yeah, yeah, no problem that. with that. I don't mean to overstep Carmela because she may notice that information that I don't. But that, I think that was the intent of the GLP, GLPC. Was it just that more? We never get a chance to really talk amongst ourselves. We come in here, we listen to cases, and we're out of here, and we just really don't get a chance to get to know each other very well. That's all. We've got some new members. That's I, I have no I'm problem. very open to that. I like smaller, more intimate groups. <laughs> <laughs> Not crowds. Okay. You want to try to do it one evening and have a meal? Do you want to just have a hors d'oeuvres and a mango little thing for an hour and a half or so in the evening? Or? Oh, so 
Hot luck, we all bring a little something. Either way, if y'all would like to go to a restaurant, then I can reserve a, a, a private room if they have one. How much of a What day is good for you all for the weekday? Anybody have a problem with any particular weekdays? No, I'm pretty flexible myself. So it's hard to know a month in advance. Usually, usually any weekday for me is fine. Okay. So if we we're, we're looking at what seven to eight thirty, six thirty to eight, six thirty to eight thirty. Maybe select a couple of dates that, that doesn't interfere with other things, other county city meetings. Y'all have the busiest schedule, so we need to work around your schedule. We're all just, you know, whatever we are here. I'm going to step out on a limb and assume that this would be, we would be responsible for our own supper or whatever, or either we would bring orders, whatever we're going to do. Anybody have a problem with that? Okay. Well, any, the Mama June's has been thrown out. Would any, anybody prefer somewhere else possibly, or they know the places got a, a room that we could get a back room? I think it's only that one. Because uh, somebody might want drinks, I don't think Mother Jean's got drinks. Third one. Just bring it up. Well, I can't hear you. You can't drink it, Mama Jean. I like the Austin's idea. Yeah, I like Austin. Austin. Yeah. I haven't been in Austin in years. Do they have a, a smaller back room? Yeah, they have a smaller back room. What was their hotel rooms? They have already moved back into meeting rooms. Like they'll open up two rooms and it's like one big room with a table. Okay. That's what it was last year. Okay. Anybody? Any other suggestions? Any other thoughts? Tessa <laughs> and they have drinks. <laughs> you think it's going to be that bad? It's got to be good. Yeah, it may be. It needs to be an option. That's all I'm saying. Right, right. That's <laughs> all I'm saying. Yeah, just in case, you know. <laughs> well, Tracy, if you would ramrod that a little bit and send us all an email and please respond to Tracy at some point timely so that we can narrow it down if we have to. Send another email out. We got time to put it all together. I'll talk to her all about dates and look for an email from me towards the end of the week. Thank all you. right. Anything else? Any new business, old business? Anything we need to talk about? Ladies and gentlemen, we stand adjourned. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. Yes. Okay. I'm going to back up one second before everybody leaves. Nancy, thank you very much for coming back to us. The problem is all Well, I can tell if all I resign and it was maybe 1st of January that you have. No. No.